Welcome to the Introduction to the Developmental Needs Meeting Strategy. In this 25-minute slideshow, I will tell you about a psychotherapy model for healing childhood wounds. The Developmental Needs Meeting Strategy is a psychotherapeutic approach based on what is known about how a child's brain develops within a healthy family. It borrows from ego state therapy, inner child therapy, developmental psychology, attachment theory, EMDR therapy, and the latest developments in neuroscience. The DNMS is designed to treat present-day problems in adults that originated with unmet childhood needs. The DNMS is based on several underlying assumptions, starting with the idea that children grow and develop in stages and that each developmental stage involves a set of needs that should be met by parents or caregivers. For example, unconditional love, protection, loving correction, and appropriate limits. The degree to which developmental needs were not adequately met is the degree to which a person may be stuck in childhood. Being stuck means that behaviors, beliefs, or emotions connected to unresolved childhood experiences can still be triggered today. A person who is stuck in childhood may feel confident one minute, then, after something upsetting happens, suddenly sees the world through the eyes of a sad, angry, or fearful child. For example, take the skilled manager who feels confident and secure at work, when he gets a hostile phone call from an older brother, he suddenly feels helpless and insecure, the same way he felt in childhood. This may explain why some people have behaviors, beliefs, or emotions that they do not like or want, but cannot stop. A child may become stuck after experiencing verbal, physical, or sexual abuse, physical or emotional neglect, or parenting that fails to meet developmental needs. A child may even become stuck when well-meaning caregivers unknowingly make poor parenting choices or experience hardships that make it impossible for them to meet needs they would otherwise be able to meet. To understand the DNMS, it is necessary to understand parts of self. Everyone has parts of self. For example, everyone has experienced ambivalence. You can probably recall a time when one part of you wanted to study while another part wanted to play, or a time when one part of you wanted to diet while another part wanted to eat dessert. Everyone has different self-states for different roles, such as work, play, parenting, and romance. Consider the drill sergeant, who has a part of self for training soldiers, which is different from the part of self who plays with his infant son, which is different from the part of self who romances his wife. Parts of self formed by positive experiences live in the present, and parts of self formed by wounding experiences, such as abuse, neglect, rejection, and meshment, are stuck in the past. Parts of self that are stuck in the past can have competing agendas, which lead to internal conflicts. Perhaps you can think of some inner conflicts that you wrestle with, the aim of the DNMS is to provide the emotional repair wounded child parts need to become totally unstuck from the past. As child parts get unstuck, internal cooperation replaces competing agendas, which leads to the resolution of internal conflicts. The result is fewer unwanted behaviors, beliefs, and emotions, and greater ability to respond to stressors with adult skills and strengths. Clinicians have reported that the DNMS is helpful for treating many symptoms and disorders that originated in unmet developmental needs. The DNMS accomplishes both ego strengthening and trauma resolution and has been successful with a range of clients from those with simple problems to those with complex trauma histories. Because the DNMS focuses on the wounds of individual parts of self, DNMS therapists routinely communicate directly with specific wounded child parts and facilitate communication between wounded child parts and mature adult parts of self. 
Because this is not the way people usually talk to each other, it can seem odd at first. However, clients get used to it when they see how helpful it is. In the DNMS, there are protocols and procedures for connecting to mature adult parts of self, selecting child parts for processing, and meeting developmental needs. The DNMS assumes that many clients already have within them mature adult parts of self that can help child parts heal. The DNMS begins with a protocol for strengthening a connection to those resource parts of self. They are a spiritual core self, a nurturing adult self, and a protective adult self. They are strengthened individually and as a team. The spiritual core self is the part of self that is considered the core of one's being. Some people call it the soul. It is a state of mind that is often experienced during meditation, prayer, peak spiritual experiences, and enlightening near-death experiences. This state of mind embodies qualities of safety, wholeness, acceptance, no desires, no aversions, no struggles, completeness, understanding, invulnerability, timeless wisdom, unconditional love, interconnectedness. It is not necessary to believe in God or spirituality to connect with this part of self, but for those who believe in God, this is the part of self that resonates with divine love from a higher power. One of several brief guided meditations may be used to help a client connect to this resource. The word spiritual has been omitted from several of the meditations, so those who do not like the word spiritual can connect to a core self. When asked for a mental picture, many clients report their spiritual core self looks like a ball of light or energy. A nurturing adult self is the state of mind that can competently nurture a loved one, while a protective adult self is the state of mind that can competently protect a loved one. Many skills and traits are needed to be a good enough nurturer or protector, and most people have all of these skills whether they're aware of it or not. If a caregiver skill was applied even once in the past, it can be applied again in the future. Two guided DNMS meditations are used to heighten awareness of these skills. One meditation connects to the nurturing adult self, while the other connects to the protective adult self. The two meditations are very similar, both consisting of the same list of 24 caregiver skills and traits. The list includes skills like being empathic, compassionate, understanding, nurturing, reliable, trustworthy, respectful, strong, courageous, and protective. Clients are invited to think about a meaningful relationship with a loved one that they have now or had in the past. A favorite time when all or most of the skills on the list were naturally, effortlessly, and appropriately applied at the same time. For example, a client might think about caring for their pet or babysitting their grandchild. Clients are encouraged to think about that meaningful relationship during the meditations and to picture their nurturing and protective adult self as who they are in that relationship. Once a connection has been made with each of the three resources, they are invited to join together to form a healing circle. Later, wounded child parts will be invited into the circle where resources will work as a team to help the child parts heal old wounds and get totally unstuck from the past. Once the healing circle is established, it is important to select the most important child parts for processing. 
There are several types of wounded child parts, reactive parts and maladaptive interjects. Reactive parts are wounded child parts that form in reaction to dysfunctional caregivers. They hold traumatic memories, painful emotions, and engage in counterproductive coping behaviors such as drinking, withdrawing, overachieving, and so on. All reactive parts have good intentions, no matter how problematic their emotions or behaviors may be. People notice the problems created by reactive parts. They are directly connected to the problems they want therapy to fix, such as depression, perfectionism, eating disorders, generalized anxiety, substance abuse, and trauma flashbacks. These are some examples of reactive parts who may be triggered by different situations. Children are naturally curious and eager to observe and learn from caregivers. They form internalized representations of the caregivers they observe, automatically and unconsciously. These mental representations are parts of self that mimic, act like, or imitate those caregivers. These parts of self are called introjects. Newly discovered mirror neurons appear to explain why we develop parts of self that mimic our caregivers. It is not a choice. It is a biological reflex. When parts of self mimic caregivers who are loving, supportive and kind, we thrive. When parts of self mimic caregivers who are abusive, neglectful or unable for any reason to meet our needs, we suffer. A child's true nature is good. Children have a natural desire to be in respectful harmony with self and others. A child part of self who mimics a wounding caregiver does so like an actor wearing a costume or mask that he or she does not like but cannot take off. That is because the behavior being mimicked does not match the child's true nature. Here is an example of a maladaptive interject. The child part is wearing a mask that mimics mother, conveying the message, you're bad. The child wearing the mask does not like the mask or want the mask, but doesn't know how to get rid of it. Child parts who mimic wounding caregivers are called maladaptive interjects. They will convey a caregiver's wounding message to reactive parts, which can generate substantial internal conflict. This type of internal conflict is the primary focus of the DNMS protocols. Here is another example. This child part is wearing a mask that mimics father conveying the message, you can't do anything right. Because father's disrespectful behavior does not match the child's true nature, it doesn't integrate well. Instead, it hangs on like a mask. This shows what happens to a child who is repeatedly treated this way. A caregiver delivers a hurtful message, and reactive parts begin to form. This one is in despair, believing, I can't do anything right. This one wants to withdraw. This one is angry, maybe also rebellious. But these are not the only child parts that form when a caregiver behaves this way another part also forms. An interject who mimics the caregiver's message and delivers it to the same reactive parts that formed in reaction to the caregiver. Years later, the maladaptive interject will still be around long after the caregiver is gone, delivering the same wounding caregiver message to the reactive parts. This shows what happens when an adult overreacts to a stressful event. Let's say, for example, the stress comes from the boss saying, you made a typo, please correct it. Reactive parts that formed in reaction to dad appear to react to the boss. One feels some despair, another is withdrawn, and another is angry. It looks like they are reacting to the boss, and to some degree they are, but something else is also happening. An interject of dad also got triggered by the stress. 
The reactive parts respond to the interjected father delivering his wounding message, you can't do anything right. The DNMS is based on the assumption that all present-day issues that originated in unmet childhood needs are perpetuated by maladaptive interjects. Therefore, these wounded child parts are the most important ones to select for healing work. Once a maladaptive interject has healed, the costume disappears and the unfriendly mimicking ceases. All the reactive parts that the costume had abused or intimidated experience immediate relief and all the associated problem behaviors, beliefs and emotions improve. If there are no maladaptive interjects triggered when the boss says, you made a typo, please correct it, the most adult self simply says, sure, I'll have that fixed right away. There is no irrational overreaction. When child parts are healed, clients will respond to all types of stressors, both mild and severe, with their most mature self. The DNMS has a process for identifying maladaptive interjects connected to a particular problem, conflict, or issue. Once an interject has been identified, a special protocol, called the Switching the Dominance Protocol, is the first step in helping it heal. In this picture, the interject mask and message are dominant. The DNMS therapist talks to the child part wearing the mask. Until now, this child part has never had a voice. The therapist might say something like, Hey, little one, I want you to know I see you and I know that you're good. And I know the difference between you and this mask. What's it like to hear that? The child part is usually surprised and relieved to be seen and understood. Within just a few minutes, the therapist can show the child part that the mask is just a recording of the hurtful person and not a real threat. As the child part becomes more aware that the mask is just a recording, the mask becomes smaller and less animated. Eventually it becomes so small and insignificant that the child will gladly put the remains of the mask in a pocket. When the mask is in the pocket, the dominance has been switched from the mask to the child. The internal conflicts that had been generated by the mask are immediately calmed. This intervention often results in an immediate reduction of symptoms. The positive effects may last a long time, a few weeks, or until the next time the client is stressed. However, the child part is still an interject until getting totally unstuck with the needs meeting protocol. A brief description of the DNMS needs meeting protocol follows. The process starts by identifying several wounded child parts connected to a common theme in this example, three maladaptive interjects have been selected for processing. The client is invited to connect to the resources. Next, the selected child parts are invited into the healing circle. You can see the interject masks peeking out of the children's pockets. The child parts are invited to notice the safety and comfort of the resources. They are then invited to think back to childhood to reflect on needs that were met well and needs that were not met well, and then to name what they need most right now. They often report needing things like unconditional love, safety, attention, nurturing, validation, protection, encouragement, and so forth. If they say, for example, they need to be nurtured, the therapist will ask, can the resources nurture you now? When they say yes, they are invited to notice the resources meeting their need for nurturing now. The resources meet many needs, one at a time, until the client reports the child parts appear much happier. Wounded child parts often have painful emotions to process through. This step offers clients several gentle options for working through unresolved anger and grief. Because this occurs with the loving support of the resources, the process usually takes just a few minutes. 
the child parts feel enormous relief when the painful emotions are gone. By this time, the costumes are usually gone too. In this step, child parts are invited to look into the eyes of the nurturing adult self and to report what they see. Typical answers include love, warmth, compassion, empathy. They are asked if they feel a bond forming. When they say yes, they are asked to notice the loving bond strengthen. This process is repeated with each resource. A group bond is also strengthened. This part of the protocol uncovers any remaining disturbance that might be keeping the child parts from becoming totally unstuck. To find out what disturbance remains, the child parts are invited to revisit being in their parents' care, just as it was in the past, without the resources present for support. If this is disturbing to recall, there is another unmet need. That unmet need is named and the resources meet it. Again, the child parts are invited to revisit being in their parents' care just as it was in the past. If this is still disturbing to recall, there is yet another unmet need. When that unmet need is named, the resources meet it. These steps are repeated until the child parts report that returning to their parents' care evokes no disturbance at all. At this point in the process, the child parts are usually totally unstuck. This term has a special meaning in the DNMS. Child parts are presumed to be totally unstuck when all previous steps have been successfully completed, especially the last one. Child parts report feeling totally unstuck. Child parts are pictured by the client as being free, happy, and engaged in age-appropriate play, and the body is free of disturbing emotions. The work is finished by inviting the child parts to name a positive belief, one that feels true now that did not feel true before. All child parts are tucked in at the end of the work. Tucking in means putting child parts in a non-active state. The needs meeting protocol typically takes between one and three hours to complete. Right away, clients report a sense of confidence and calm, a sense of reduced internal conflict, and specific negative beliefs no longer feel true. In future sessions, clients report noticing favorable changes in behaviors, beliefs, and emotions. The needs meeting protocol treats parts of self connected to a shared problem. For example, if the problem is an irrational fear of failure, the process might treat all the introjects that convey wounding messages about being a failure. A client with more than one problem will need to cycle through the steps again for the next problem. For example, if another problem is an irrational fear of setting boundaries, the process might treat all the introjects that convey wounding messages about setting boundaries. These steps are repeated with each problem until all therapy goals have been met. In conclusion, the developmental needs meeting strategy offers hope to clients who may be experiencing unwanted behaviors, beliefs, and emotions that originated in unmet childhood needs. Clients and therapists worldwide have found this model to be an effective means of healing childhood wounds. Several published articles document the success clients have had with the DNMS. They are available to read at the DNMS website. For information about becoming a DNMS therapist or finding a DNMS therapist, contact the DNMS Institute or visit www dnmsinstitute.com. For information about the DNMS developer, Shirley Jean Schmidt, visit her website at www.shirleyjeanschmidt.com. Thank you very much for watching the slideshow.